Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live here in British Columbia, in Vancouver for OpenStack Summit, live three days of coverage. This is Silicon Angles, The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angles. Join my co-host, Stu Miniman with the Wikibon.com. He's the chief analyst of cloud infrastructure. And our next guest is Fayaz Sharp Prawala, SVP at Cisco for cloud services. Welcome to The Cube. Thanks for having me. Appreciate great to it. see. Great to see the Cisco presence here. Obviously, everyone has Cisco. Everyone has a little bit of this and that in the, in the enterprise and service provider market. Huge opportunity with cloud. Okay, and you guys are ubiquitous in the install base out there. What are your What are your customers telling you around cloud, and what are they looking for from Cisco, and and how does OpenStack fit in all this? It's a great. It's a great question. And look, I mean, for us, uh, I'll just make a headline, which we're betting quite heavily on OpenStack and the most important reason for that being open, right? Uh, just as we bet on IP when I started back at Cisco in 92, right, because it was open, right? So we want to make sure that it's, it's uh, proliferates across the board and that you know, it's not about uh, the world of many ecosystems, but you know, an open ecosystem and that's why OpenStack. So as it relates to Cisco's focus, clearly we um, have been in the cloud business for a long time. We've been enabling clouds uh, both on-prem we make data center equipment, right? We make networking equipment, and we've been, of course, uh, enabling service providers to build uh, their clouds. So, and if you think about the customer pain point and the problem statement today, it's the, the, the easiest way for me, the way I think about it is, our customers are going to live in the world of many clouds, right? So it's not going to be about any one cloud. It's not going to be a Google cloud or an Amazon cloud or an on-prem cloud. It's going to be a world of many clouds. And different clouds are going to serve up different applications, different needs. So the question becomes for a customer, um, how do I navigate between what I have to do on-prem for specific reasons, it could be for compliance reasons, it could be for performance reasons, uh, or if I have to run certain things from the cloud because it makes sense, an Azure cloud because I'm using Microsoft apps or you know, AWS for other reasons, or Cisco cloud for, that, for the other reasons, and then I may be also consuming SaaS, right? So how do I navigate between the world of these many clouds? And so for us, the focus is around hybrid cloud and it's really about enabling customers to be able to navigate workloads from you know, on-prem to in the cloud and to be able to consume services from the cloud in a very in a unified, simple manner. Right? So OpenStack is the underlying um, kind of platform that goes between uh, both clouds. Right? But again, we support every other cloud through our technologies. Right? Um, and then on top of that, we want to provide a kind of a, a single pane of glass. Yeah. So, so Fias, first of all, uh, you got to be careful. Single pane of glass. My friends always say that it's spelled P-A-I-N. Pane of um, glass. And Fair. you know, management Fair. is one of those things that you know we haven't spoken a ton about this week at the show. Yeah. Um, but it's really one of the pain points we hear from users. Um, even in virtualization environments, they say, you know, really what I need is better management. Um, can you talk about Cisco's kind of evolution in this space? You guys made a number of acquisitions over the years. Uh, you know, I remember it was New Scale and Topspin and uh, others. Uh, MetaCloud was the big OpenStack one. We interviewed Son Lynch last year, yeah, uh, you know, at, at the program here. So you've been at Cisco for many years. What's the evolution from Cisco's standpoint and what's Cisco's role in helping, you know, the, the the cloud management platform. It's a, it's a great question, and look again. If you look at Cisco's heritage, for us, firstly, it's always about customer choice. So, even on-prem, while we are really pushing OpenStack significantly, we support we support other stacks as well. We just announced recently the Azure stack on-prem with, with with Microsoft. We've been supporting VMware for a long time, right? As a customer choice, but as customers uh, deploy multiple stacks on-prem, and they will continue to do so, and also want to consume stuff from the cloud. The question becomes, do I have to have six panes of glass, or can I you know, at least have a catalog, one catalog, or e-store through which I can serve all these things up, right? And for us, that's a big focus, and, and, and the evolution of some of the, the acquisitions you mentioned is now a, a product called you know, Prime Services Catalog, which kind of sits above that layer, right, of the various uh, orchestrations and provides, you know, a, I, would, I would call it more of a catalog uh, that customers can put you know, it's really, at the end of the day, it's really about services. Uh, what services can you consume as an end user on-prem, whether they happen to be running on-prem or in the cloud or they are a SaaS, 
So that's that's how we're looking at the problem. Yeah, I absolutely. Love the catalog. Of course, there's a big announcement here at OpenStack about how does it m make it easier for kind of community apps to be uh, consumed on there. Um, one of the things Cisco's been highlighting this week is the partnership with Red Hat. Yes. So, you know, you talked about a, a couple of the, the partners and choice that you're doing. Um, you know, what, what's special about the Cisco Red Hat partnership? Uh, look, I mean, I, and I'm working very closely with uh, Paul, uh, who's my peer on the, on the Red Hat side. Um, and, and it's very, very important. If you think about the journey map of Red Hat, I mean, the journey map started with OpenStack, with customers, right? Um, everybody's looking at OpenStack for various reasons, it makes sense, right? But it's really about accelerating the journey because OpenStack is not um, a, a distro that you can go buy and deploy out of a CD, right? It's, it's a set of tools and then you still have to come up with the right deployment architecture. So for us, if you think about who the leaders in the space are, clearly we, we are in infrastructure, right? Red Hat is in, in um, Linux, OpenStack. How do we work together to accelerate customers from you know, having a robust stack that they can deploy very rapidly and quickly, right? And then we have the right services to stand behind it from a kind of industrial strength perspective, right? So that they don't have to worry about open source tinkering, but they can be running production workloads, right? And we have Cisco and Red Hat standing behind And the behind support it. behind it. The support There's behind a lot it. of SLA requirements, and I'm just Red Hat, you guys have great experience there. Absolutely, and they have a great presence already in enterprise. We have great presence in enterprise. You know, that was the power of of the two. So Fiaz, I, yes, I got to ask you the, the, the question that's coming up on theCUBE here and, and through the sessions as we're seeing packed sessions, people sitting on the floors, a lot of engineers here across the board. And there's a lot of new in migration, new people coming in. They're builders and they're engineers. There's software engineers, also you know, network engineers, ops engineers, all kind of coming together. So there's a real emphasis on architecture. The conversations here this year is not about will OpenStack be successful, it's how it will be successful. So there's a lot of architectural discussion. So what's your vision? How do you see all this coming together? You obviously having industrial grade OpenStack tooling and, and, and capabilities and services, what's the vision? Because it's a systems architecture or a services architecture model. How do you guys look at that and how do you talk to your customers around the, the architects out there? Because that's where the action is right now. The architects are digging in. Uh, excellent, and I, and I think you know I'll talk at the macro level um, as opposed to the specifics and the technology, but as I look at the problem statement across the board, and, and you know, MetaCloud has been a great acquisition for us, and, and the reason we acquired MetaCloud was specifically around making, again, making OpenStack easy for customers to consume. So, so the, their model is, it's sort of a SaaS model for OpenStack, so it's OpenStack as a service, right? So now think about um, your customer segments. When you think about commercial, enterprise, service provider, they have different needs, different deployment models, and different scale required for OpenStack, right? So, as, so service provider customers will, will need Neutron, other things, you know, enterprise or commercial customers may not need that kind of a, a, a technologies, under, underlying technology. They just want something to work and you know get it up and running in the ease. So, how do you, how do we really um, take OpenStack from where it's at, where it's a bunch of great technologies, and then you know, you, you, it's like tools in the toolkit that you have to Piece draw together. from, and then you build architectures on the fly, right? To coming up with a specific set of architectures around customer segments and use cases that you can bring to bear at scale, right? So I think that's how we're looking at the problem, that's how we're working with Red Hat, and of course we're driving you know, our architects, whether it's Lou and, and the rest of the team, to really think, think from that perspective so we can, we can bring so this to So you see scale. reference architectures being a big part of the next year of, of rollouts, where you guys can bring your expertise and saying, I'm not so we heard a lot of a policy base, that's a Cisco kind of you know, <laughs> you know, bumper sticker, all internally in the company, everything's policy based, you got automation orchestration now with Kubernetes and containers and whatnot, so you have this policy based infrastructure that needs to be programmable, AKA DevOps. So this is a big thing. So what reference architectures do you see emerging, and where do you see the hot spots? Where do you see the work that's being done? Where's the action? So, you know, I mean, there's action, I, I, I think, across the stack on OpenStack. I think, I'll tell you, what we're focused on is really around, you talked about, uh, we are the network company, right? Yeah. So we are clearly focused around the, the networking area, so we're putting a lot of focus, and Lou, uh, as you talked about, and his team, and my team's working on it, around driving Neutron, NFV, you know, policy and orchestration, security, the things that matter when you think about a hybrid cloud world. When you take a workload and move it from on-prem to private cloud, how do you securely move that, right? And how do you do it with policy, which is, you know, we've talked, we've launched something called ACI, or application-centric infrastructure, yep. right? So you can translate policies across multiple clouds. So for us, it's really about, around that whole network-enabled policy um, that we can bring through OpenStack, right? And through APIs, and maybe even through dashboards, but, you know, for developers, they care about APIs. So, so a big focus for us there. 
Great, and any examples of some customers you can highlight that you guys worked with here to enable that kind of awesome opportunity? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, look, we've got lots of customers uh, here. I'm just now you're putting me on a spot on which ones are referenceable or not, but uh, clearly <laughs> we announced on the service provider side, I mean, Telstra was a big intercloud launch, uh, so I can, I can speak to that and there's many more behind it. So uh, that's But it is traction, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a long tremendous list. Tremendous amount of traction, and then if you think about all the stuff with, with MediCloud, and that has been just amazing acquisition for us. We look at the laundry list of customers from you know, Tableau software to, to Disney, to, and the list goes on and on, but it's, it's, it's quite, quite So I got to ask you the kind of the social media question, not so much social media, but the conversation. You know, people want to join the conversation. Obviously, obviously, we're putting out as much content as we can to increase the conversation velocity, but what conversations are you involved in with customers and internally at Cisco or within the industry? What are the top three high-level conversations that you're having? What are those top conversations? Share some metadata. Yeah, so you know, if you're, uh, so again, I'll, Speak in terms of segments, right? So if you're if you're an enterprise customer, they they clearly want to go towards open open stack, and the conversation there is make it easy, make it simple, make it hi hybrid cloud ready and secure, right? Secure because compliance is a big issue in the cloud. You got to be secure. So Cisco, Red Hat, hopefully you guys can make that simple. We're talking to service providers. It's really about differentiation in the cloud, right? Some of those things on the other side ha have to come true for service providers because they're providing the services to the enterprise. But how do you do this at scale? with security in a multi-tenant cloud, with policy, NFV, and, and those things come into play, right? Um, so so that's, that's, a, that's, a, that, that's a big focus for us. So I think those are the two or three, and then the third piece really is around, uh, which you asked me the question, you call it a pain point, or, or, or PANE pain point, but how, how do you manage and orchestrate all this with simplicity? How do you do metering and billing across all these multiple hybrid clouds, right? And so there's been a lot of early work that's been done by many st startups in this space, and I think we're putting a lot of focus to how to drive that at scale? I mean, I think that's a, a big question. So those are three themes I would talk about. Talk about certification, big theme here this year, yeah. obviously the federated identity and among others, but the certification seems to be late to the party in OpenStack and, and you know, the folks are saying in you know, the foundation, yeah, we should have gotten on that earlier. Obviously you guys have certification, Cisco's been doing it for years, it's been a great business model and also enabler for people to have the skill sets. Um, as OpenStack kind of moves to this architectural, reference architectural uh, push, what is your vision on certification? Where should people be focused on right now? Um, also, given all this build out going on, and what's your take on certification in general around OpenStack? Yeah, you know, so <laughs> it's funny you bring that up. So, so you know, OpenStack reminds me of when I was started at Cisco back in '92 when we were doing IP, right? And when we we were just growing like crazy, and the cases were just coming in, and we couldn't keep up with the growth that we were having. And we said, how do we how do we make customers smarter? so they can do more self-help, right, versus, yeah. and that's when we came up with the whole certification program around CCI, so, you know, it's, it it's was really- It's been great for Cisco, you guys really enabled it, huge explosion. Absolutely, and, and it was, it's been fantastic, you know, we've got now, um, overall two million certified people, not CCI, but all the other certification we have out there. So similarly, when you think about now, fast forward, you know, we're here at OpenStack, and you see the kind of traction that the community is getting, right, I, I heard it was, 1,000 to 1,500 people last year, and there's 6,000 people this year, so it's exponential, right? And yeah. I suspect next year will be, who knows, 15,000 people. So for us, we are looking at putting certifications together uh, around open stack stacks, which will be, you know, from training to, to the, the levels of certification from, you know, basic to intermediate to, to high level. And, and, and we have a, I mean, our, our learning uh, organization is actually looking at that. So for us, we want to proliferate this in a big way drive certifications, you know, incentivize people to, to take on OpenStack. I think there's a huge amount of interest. I mean, even in our company, people want to learn OpenStack, they want to get, you know, ahead of it. I mean, you see the presence that we have here yeah. this year has been massive, because across the board, everybody wants to get on OpenStack. So certification mm -hmm. is a great way of ena enabling that. And, so. the, and your partner with Red Hat, they also have a similar experience as well with Linux, and this is where your customers want that different conversation. And, and so share more about that. I'm a customer, I walk in, I want some OpenStack, just back the truck up and just drop it off, or it, how does it work? I mean, take us through the customer conversation, because they want OpenStack mm -hmm. at high quality, with security, multiple clouds, what's that? What, what do they want? What's the what's the language of the customer? They want MetaCloud. That's, what <laughs> that's, that's why we acquired MetaCloud, right? I mean, it's really about, uh, look, I mean, it's MetaCloud, it's the Cisco Red Hat relationship. It's really about, there are two, there are two things that are happening. I mean, clearly, you know, the, the skill set yeah. in OpenStack is still very hard to find, and hard to find at scale, right? Yeah. And so customers are, um, clearly want to build it, are looking for it, but it's, it's not easy to track. So in the meantime, how do you make it easy for them to at least deploy OpenStack, so we can do that with as a service model. So we just, you know, it's really about 
we bring the truck in, we'll deploy it, we'll manage it, update it, upgrade it. You don't have to worry about it. You just worry, drop your application and go, yeah. right? And, and as they do that, they're going to start building more and more expertise and experience, right, on the platform. And then we'll have certification programs and other things that, that we bring to bear. So my hope is that in the next year or two, you're going to start seeing uh, this community get, you know, very, very prolific. Yeah, so Fias, I wonder if you can give us a little bit of your personal insight. You said you've been at Cisco since 92. Um, you know, John Chambers is stepping down as CEO after 20 years. Uh, we've talked about open a bunch on this uh, this event. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've been in networking my entire career. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, for years it was, you know, look, Cisco was so heavily involved in standards. Yeah. You know, Cisco would help get it work and yeah. then bring it to the standards body and work it through. Open's very different. It happens faster. There's many more people involved. You know, how, how does that shift of kind of management and a, a new, mo more open, collaborative, partnership world. You know, how does that filter into life at Cisco? I mean, look, I'll just I'll use an analogy to say this because for me, why this has been so exciting and it's exciting and very early in the journey is it's exactly like when we started back in '92. When I started at Cisco, we were a very small company. We came up with this multi-protocol router, and it allowed us to connect. Uh, various protocols from DeckNet to Apple Talk to SNA <laughs> to XNS. I remember I have this t shirt. Wait, no, I no, have no token it. ring? Uh, token yeah. ring. Oh, okay. Right. Excellent. Excellent. And, token and, I, and I have that t shirt which says, others talk about it and we do it all in the back. And we had like 25 protocols listed, right? <laughs> but the focus was really around, of course, bridging that divide so that everybody could communicate between each other seamlessly, but then getting them all to an open standard, which is IP. And, and you know, eventually we got everybody there. And then if you remember in the 90s, uh, this company called Netscape came along with a browser, right? So the internet started brewing with IP, and everybody could connect and send emails, and then in th we, we had Netscape come along, and that became the window to the internet, and then the whole e-commerce economy sprouted, right? And it completely opened up the TAM, and everything, the world changed, as we knew it. Um, so now, fast forward and apply that today to what we're doing with Open, and why we focus so much on OpenStack, right? So we live in this world of many clouds. If you go to AWS, it's one protocol. You go to Azure, it's one protocol. You go to Google, it's one protocol. How do we proliferate the world of open, OpenStack being that, so that everybody can play in this new world, and can, we can connect the world of many clouds, because today we've created, there are many, many clouds out there, but they're not all connected into a hybrid cloud fashion, right? So how do you connect this world of many clouds? And, and why is that important to customers? Because if you're able to do that, then you unlock a tremendous amount of value and TAM that is locked up in all these silos, right? Through an open ecosystem. So suddenly this TAM becomes huge, and you've got more partners who can play, can bring more value to cloud in terms of services that matter on top. Hopefully more startups yeah. with more technologies. So I think for us it's really about unlocking that TAM. So my hope is that this doesn't become a world of three clouds, like we had you know, three or four companies at the time in the yeah. 90s, but it's a world of many, many clouds that are ubiquitous and are connected by an open ecosystem, which is you know, hopefully well, open. I think open, op open, the open model is actually kind of the, the benchmark against the gland grabbing of those three clouds, and then people want to have the kind of these custom, and I'll say purpose-built clouds, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Job. There's going to be solution workloads that'll drive it, and, and the bursting, we hear about bursting across clouds. Um, it's been great. Um, so I, I want to ask you, again, a personal question, uh, off Stu's question on Cisco, is that, you know, TCP IP was a huge enabler, and you mentioned all the different protocols like DECnet back in the day, SNA, DECnet, what it goes on and you on. You guys still remember and, yeah, <laughs> we, we, We're old enough, they're old, yeah. old dogs. Yeah, tw Twitter's <laughs> you know, lighting up yeah, with the token yeah. ring yeah. mentioned. <laughs> so. Token ring, you know, two megabits, what a state of the art. Yeah. Um, but, XNS. But, but if you look at what that um, inflection point did, that client server, you know, the whole OSI model stack back in the day when I was a computer science student growing up, and. It really, TCP IP really was the linchpin that really enabled massive wealth creation and innovation, 3Com, Cisco, list goes on and on. You guys were a big part of that. What do you see today as that disruptive enabler? If TCP IP, what, what that was for networking and interoperability, and which spawned certification, obviously Cisco's massive, massive rise to dominance and, and value creation. What is it today? What, is it, what can you point to out there, folks that are new to the industry? What's the disruptive enabler? What's the equivalent TCP IP, or is there a, an analog to that? Because we are in a really great inflection point yeah. right now. I mean, it's a lot of things coming together. What's your vision on that? I mean, again, I think it's, you know, OpenStack is protocols underlying art like TCP IP. So think about what was the problem that we were solving back in the 90s? It was really about connecting disparate LANs or WANs through a multi protocol router. Right? So it was really about creating a local area network or a wide area network. What are we doing today? We're connecting the world of many clouds and we're calling it a cloud area network. Right? And how do we do that and do it in a seamless fashion right, with protocols, OpenStack, think of it OpenStack as that you know, open protocol 
uh, that allows you to seamlessly you know, move workloads. Clearly, a lot of this dream has to be realized, and we're very early in this journey. Um, and you know, there's containers on top and other things that will allow us to, to move things seamlessly, right? But for us, it's really about unlocking that um, value. And for, my hope is that as more and more people see that, and, and they're going to see what is the value that we need to create in the stack, whether it's within OpenStack, whether it's in, you know, in, under policy and security, which becomes a very, very important piece of the puzzle because when you're going multi-cloud, when you're crossing you know, country lines, the data sovereignty is a big, big issue. How do you solve for these problems in, in a cloud environment, right? So there are very interesting problems to solve uh, over there, uh, some of it which we are, we're solving, of course, as a network company. And then as you move further up the stack, uh, within OpenStack, as you move further up the stack in, into containers, that we talked about, and then into, into the management, or what is that cloud marketplace going to look like? What is the Netscape for cloud? It hasn't come yet, it's it coming. Come yet. It's but coming. We need, but we need something, right? Look, if you yeah. build this cloud air network, how do you expose all these services? And you know, we're, we're taking a, a push at it by building our own marketplace to expose all these services, yeah. but you know. How you want to enable. You want to enable. You want to enable that next generation. The cloud and is that enabling. Cloud is that enabling, and, and building that cloud area network. And if you're successful, the TAM is massive. It's massive, right? Where are we playing? Fine, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. I'll give you the final word. Um, you're bullish in OpenStack. What's your vision for OpenStack? How does this evolve over the next five years? From your, you shoot the arrow forward, what's the next five years look like? So you know, my, my, my hope is that um, OpenStack has got to go from being um, something that customers want to dabble in, that it's very interesting, we want to bring it in, check it out, right? And, and now I think we're making that, crossing that line, because we're seeing more and more production workloads. You know, in the next couple of years, it's really got to be, we got to see it more be, be more and more mainstream, mm -hmm. both on-prem on and also through cloud providers. And then in five years, we really have to see this vision of the cloud area network through an open yeah. ecosystem play out with the appropriate marketplace yeah. on top, where now, you know, like when Netscape came and yeah. opened up the e-commerce economy, we opened yeah. up this whole cloud economy yeah. with an open fashion and it's a massive, massive TAM. And then when we have this next conversation, it's about, you know, yeah. I don't know what those billions might Get the protocol, like. enable some growth, and then stuff magically happens on top. Cloud area networks, I mean, inter-networking was a buzzword, now inter-clouding might be the buzzword, and that's right? So inter-clouding is exactly <laughs> what it is. Inter-clouding with networks, apps, cloud, just the cube. With policy sharing, and security. Yeah. Sharing the insights from Cisco. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, really so appreciate it. Uh, a lot of opportunities out there. I will share more with you. We are at the short break. We'll be, we'll be right back. Day three coverage of OpenStack Summit live in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. We'll be right back. <laughs>